do not believe so. Okay. No. All right, then next up is we're going to discuss our committee of results, um, Ms. Brown and Ms. Williams. So the first thing I would like to do is to orient you to what you have in front of you. Um, the first thing you have is the schedule so that you will know um, in hard copy, you will know uh, what school will be presenting um, next after you see a particular school. So that's your first item. Then you have a single page copy of last year's test scores for our elementary schools, middle schools, and high schools so that you could be able to look at that as they talk about this year's scores. And then the large document that you have um, is a copy of each school's presentation that they will bring to you tonight. Uh, yours is in color, mine and Mr. Brown's are in black and white because we were conserving there. So um, unless you have further questions, um, I would like to, to for you to remember that um, on a hard copy in front of you, you have a district uh, in tw 2015 and 2016, it's a white, black and white copy, and you have a 2015 line on the left hand and a 2016 line on the right hand. And at the bottom, if you see my handwriting where it says accountability, and there's a strike through that. So that's what I want you to know that is gone. You will never see that again. The accountability tab has been taken off the school report card. So that information there, that's the last time that you will see this because we're moving into a completely new system uh, from this point on. At our next meeting, we will go into that. Um, the, all of the scores that you will see tonight, including those on the single hard copies, are assessment scores only. So it's not an accountability score, it's an assessment score. The scores from the district that you received earlier this week from Mr. Brown, they have only the proficient and distinguished students together. That's the score that you have because that's where we need to be. We only um, put the proficient and distinguished scores combined on those. So on this point, from this point on, we will only look at assessment scores and that's the only tab that you will see on the school report card. So, um, the schools are going to present their information to you as they wanted to. I don't want to tell them how to do that. We gave them a frame. Uh, they looked at what happened last year when they presented or their predecessor presented. They're going to tell you the scores in each content area and then they're going to tell you the why. Why they did well, why maybe they didn't do so well, or any other information that they wish to share. And then they're on to the next steps, or how are they going to achieve proficiency with all students in their building. Um, some students, uh, some schools have chosen to use the apprentice score with their data. So if you see something that I gave you and there is a point or two difference in that particular thing, that school chose to use apprentice. I only gave you proficient and distinguished. So that would be the discrepancy if you see anything like that. Um, other than that, next month we will dive into the new accountability system and the district will share our data with you as well as our preschool and the academy at Horizons because we're all district programs. So we will present together at December meeting. So do you have any further questions until we start with our schools? I would just like to remind the board and, and everybody else is that this is a different system than what you've been used to in the past and you're it's very i don't want to say not impossible but almost very difficult to compare last year's scores with the information <coughs> that you're getting this year because it's not the same test it's not the same type of data and so you have to be very careful in doing that remember this is last year and this year are baseline scores and on the new system and so we don't want to to compare either it's not apples and apples it's apples and oranges so just remember that now there is some similarities and I'm sure when the when the principals do their report to you all they will point out some of the similarities and some things that they feel good about and some areas they want to do and also remember that we have new principals in majority not in more most of our buildings have new principles and just remember where they were last year and where they we are this year so with that Ms. Brown, we go for
Good evening. Uh, Kevin Payton, Principal of New England School, second year. So. Um, first of all, I you know this is not real happy to call in Boston. They are awesome, but <laughs> while we have grown, we still got a long way to go. So we're just gonna get in their scores and look at them. Um, pay prep last year. One of our big areas, and you're gonna see it throughout the thing, is our novice and our gap is still rather high. Um, we did make some improvements, but we're still like that long way out. You see our um, eighth break in elementary reading, um, 38 novice in our GAT population, 44 um, overall in achievement. Um, our percentage, 39.1 novice in reading, and that's elementary. Um, we didn't shrink that. We got nothing out of that. Um, if we break it down into areas, our overall 39.1, our disability is 82.4% 82 .4 in office. Um, I'll talk about later, we're targeting that this year, but again, it's the same as it has been. It's not growing. It's not, we're not moving those novice kids. Um, middle school, a little better, but still not great. Um, our gap group is only 24, um, 15 and 2 proficient in the same group. Middle school looked a little better, but still not good. Um, again, biggest area, our disability. Um, almost 50% of our middle school disability are novice. Uh, math looks better than our reading, but if you look at overall, overall score, it's still not good. 22% um, of our middle school are novice, 48 apprentice, only two distinguished. Um, again, 23.7% 23.7% novice for math percentages. Um, we did grow. Our overall growth last year for elementary has gone up. Um, we're at 41. Uh, reading and math both grew. Not as much as I hoped, not as much as I thought it was going to grow. I can tell you I was disappointed with the amount of growth we got, but we did grow. Um, we're, we have the young staff and we're, we're going. We're getting in the right direction. We just got to keep on going. Middle school. Um, I'd like to say, tell you that I was shocked at these scores, but I'm not. Um, I told Ms. Brown at the end of last year, I told her also um, not to expect growth in our middle school, and we've discussed the reasons why, and we've addressed the reasons why. Um, our reading did go up a little. I was a little surprised on that, but our math did drop, and I was not surprised at all there. Um, but we, like I said, we've addressed those issues, and hopefully we're going to see a big turnaround this year. Um, K prep writing, elementary, um, we didn't get any distinguished, which again, I was kind of hoping we did, we'd get there. We put a lot of work, um, I know Robin pushed our writing initiative last year, and we put a lot of time and we saw a lot of growth in that. Um, I was really expecting to see a lot more um, from our elementary, but it's still, if you look at it, we went from 8.6 two years ago to 40% last year. We had a heck of a growth. Um, still, I don't think it's where we thought it was going to be. Uh, but like I say, Robin's initiative there pushed us, and we got we got some good points there. I'd like to say we did the same in middle school, but it didn't happen. Um, middle school actually went down. Did, what, what grade did the elementary level was assessed on the right? Yeah. Fifth, fifth, right? Yeah. And so you probably only got that 30 or so each fifth grade student. Uh, 36. Which is the same thing we were just talking about right up in the in the yeah. Yeah. In eighth grade, same way. Um, now, our plan for this year, and where we're going from here, obviously, again, large turnover in our school. Um, not an excuse, it is what it is, and we're building on that. Um, really excited about the direction we're going with our novice reduction in gap. Um, we brought in Ms. Harden, who used to be the principal of Bloomfield Elementary when they got distinguished. Um, she is guiding our RTI process this year and kind of doing the same thing they did there. And we've had a few tears from teachers. They're a little stressful, but it's in a good way and they've been excited about the direction we're going. It's not tears and then I'm going home. It's <laughs> tears, and but we can do this. Um, so we've got a lot of excitement there. Like I said, it is, it's tense and we've had some upset teachers, but not in a bad way. Um, they're learning and they're growing. Um, for us, novice reduction is going to be our big target this year, and it's going to be our main focus. And for us, it's we are in the past. Um, our ITI program has changed almost every year since I've been there. Um, 
It's just we've done something different. The PLCs have been that different. It's never been the same. Um, Ms. Harden's bringing in something I think is going to last for on. She's focused. It's a three to five year process. We're going to build and it's going to get better every year. But what she's selling us is not a, we're going to take this group of kids, put them in a class, we're going to teach them. We're taking all our novice kids. We are setting specific goals for each individual kid. This is what we're targeting. This is what we're doing. We're progress monitoring. We went through that meeting last night about progress monitoring. We saw a lot of stress faces, but they're getting it and they're they're on board. We, we started today with it and we already got teachers saying, oh, I love this, I love this. But we are targeting novice kids specifically with very specific plans. Uh, maybe fluency, it may be comprehension, whatever it is, we're targeting that and we're getting that. We're progress and moder monitoring it weekly to see if it's growing or going. If it's not, if they're not growing, then we're changing what we're doing. Uh, we've got LLI, we've got Orton Gillihan, all these different programs we're using down there. But just because I'm struggling and I'm, they're using LLI, LLI on me doesn't mean it's not work. So after a couple weeks, we're doing the monitoring and it's not making me grow, we're switching planes. We're doing something different. Um, so that's, we've been doing the process for, since we started school, we're just now getting to the progress monitoring parts. Um, as Leah says, she doesn't want to overwhelm all at once because then they will <laughs> collapse because it is a lot, it really is, but they're getting there. Gap closure is the same thing. Our disability group, our, our similar novice reduction, um, these are kids that we, we're looking at and we they're novice year after year after year and they're not growing. It's the same kids. So these are the kids we're really targeting and saying, hey, we're going to get them moving. Um, adding on to that, teacher retention is another issue. Um, I talked about that last year. Um, we always have turnover. It's various different reasons. And there's, I mean, some moved on to bigger and better things. Um, you can't blame them for that. We've had some, they drive an hour to school. Well, they've moved closer to their home. But for us, we're building a culture where we want to make New Haven a family. And if you've been down there, it really, if you talk to the teacher, it really does feel that way. And we've got quite a few that are, I mean, they're excited. And tomorrow night, no, not tomorrow, like Saturday night, there's, I think, 20 of us were in the main event, just as teachers, just to, outside of school to build that culture, make us feel like a family. So we want to bring them in. Another thing we're doing with the teachers is a lot of recognition, a lot of praise for them, because they're putting in a lot of hard work and doing a lot of great things. And I want them to know that we appreciate what they're doing. So we kind of support them, build them up, make sure they want they want to feel a part of our school. They want to stay at our school. So that's something we're working on, teacher retention. Another is parent involvement. Um, addressed that last year. We've gotten a lot better on that. Um, if you happen to see our uh, Ooh Haven we did a few, year, uh, a few weeks ago, phenomenal. I mean, we had tons of people out. They did the trunk retreats, and it was just awesome. We've had a lot more parent involvement. But right now, our parent involvement is just them coming out to help and doing whatever we need. Um, we had Science Center come down today. They asked for 10 volunteers, we had 15. So, I mean, parents are coming. My next step, and it's my first meeting is the next Tuesday, is a parent advisory council. And this is where I want to invite parents in, and I'm going to sit down with them, and we're going to talk. What issues do you see in New Haven? What meets the next? What are your suggestions? And we're going to get them more involved in not just volunteering their time, but actually helping us come up with solutions and ideas of what we need to do to improve. Um, basically, that's it in a nutshell. Um, we've got a long way to go, but we are moving. Let me say to Mr. Payton's behalf, because I think it's very important. You know, you can ask a lot of questions, but people have a lot of times have difficulty asking the difficult questions, the hard questions. And I'll give Mr. Payton credit this year that he's dug in and with his staff has asked hard questions why what happened and has taken steps to address issues. And I, I give him credit for the progress that they're making in their school this year and the intestinal fortitude to deal with these difficult questions. It, it, it's interesting to say that you talked about Mrs. Hart and, and some of the things that she had brought to Bloomfield Elementary. I was sitting here watching a couple of the staff in Bloomfield <laughs> Elementary that have been there um, at least 13 years, 14 years, because that's how long Jennifer's been out there. Um, and whenever you say, you know, there's things that it's making some teachers feel a little bit uneasy. I saw some head shaking going on. Um, and I can say, I remember that whenever Ms. Harden first came there, I asked him, one of the staff members there, so how are things going? And they said, it's, it's making us a little bit uneasy, but we needed it. 
uh, and I see some head nods again on it. And I, I think that was in a positive way that sometimes, you know, we do ask those hard questions. And sometimes we have to ask hard questions of ourselves. And once we kind of get through all the upset stomachs, uh, it's a much brighter side light on that other side. So. The district? Yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry, we had, we had one last right. year. Right. So wasn't it set up for It was set up. Um, How did, I mean, is that working? Honestly, there's not been any fault with this year. Um, my leader, the same teachers that were on the leadership last, this year are still taking leadership roles this year. Okay. Um, they're doing ESS. They're taking my ESS in charge of that. Um, more of them left, so he went to the county. Um, but the ones that were doing ES, they're doing that again this year, and I got another one taking on our White House as far as leader meet. She leads our White House and leader meet process, so um, they are still definitely leaders in school. Well, I've, uh, I've had a chance to talk to Ms. Harvard about really. She's, she's, we sat down and had a good talk to her about two weeks ago. She put it in perspective for me. It's, these results are not what I want. I know they're not moving fast enough. And, but it's not possible to fast enough to make improvements. And I know that, but it's t it takes time to improve the school system. And I, when I, I visit her a little bit, more than most I want, but when I first got involved, the uh, morale there wasn't near what it is now. So I want to commend you for that. I know it's, it's, a, it's a step process, but, um, and I know it's difficult for the teachers. I, I see it, but I see that it's improved, so. Thank you. Yeah, we try to make, like I said, we want to be a thing down there. And it does take a while, it does. as I say, to turn that great big ship around. And it does, it does take time. We appreciate you staying yeah. <laughs> there. Really, you. really, I, I thank you very much. Because we know it's a hard job. Yeah, we know it's a hard job now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. I just want to ask, I mean, the administrators that are still left, I mean, take a look around at the other administrators in this room, if you would. I mean, just take a moment and look at who all else you've got on your team. I, I think possibly, I think possibly this is one of the strongest building level administrative teams in the nine years that I've been on the board that, that we've had. Um, Damon, I'll say I've been doing this for 43 years. And we have as good, yeah. and especially as good a young bunch of building level administrators in this county. And I, you know, with all the changes and turmoil you came up and you got to this point with these people, I think it's a testament of this district's resiliency and for these people, and I congratulate them. I mean, you, you, you look, and again, you look around the room and you see some folks that maybe were a pure administrator the year before, or maybe were a classroom or an instructional coach, educator before, and you know, now you're, you're sitting as that administrator in the building. I mean, the resources that are among this team, uh, the ability to rely upon each other, and I'm, I've always thought the hardest thing for any human, forget it being a teacher, any human to do is to say, I don't really know, can you help me? I mean, it's, and especially as educators, because we're supposed to know the answers, right? And because the kids always go, well, Mr. Bradley, what's the answer? Uh, and, and whenever they were in your classroom, but you know, now we've, we've got these administrators sitting in this room that are willing to look at each other and go, I don't really know what the answer is. Can you help me? And it, it, it's just, it's very refreshing to see that. And, and, and also, I mean, not while everybody doing a great job, I have to point out to you, I mean, Ms. Drury and Ms. Hanloser, I mean, both of you all walked into a hornet's nest. I'll just put it simply like that. And the culture changed just in the three and a half months, four months of instruction, plus the time that you all spent you know, before classes start, I mean, that's tremendous. And while maybe the test scores aren't where, the assessment scores aren't where you want, those are gonna come. Uh, it's gonna come for New Haven as well. It's gonna come for, for any of the schools that you just don't miss more. It's, it's gonna come for Bloomfield, you know. I know you're not happy either, but there were challenges that, you know, you walked into and that you grabbed hold of as well. So it's just, it's very heartening to see such a strong 
like you said, strong one of the strongest group of administrative team across the district. Um, and I get to see a lot of districts in Central Kentucky, and I think we've got one of the best ones. And I hope all of you all, because as a board member, and I know all of us can say this, each presentation there was something that stood out. And if, and I know you all collaborate together, and, and I, I'm glad you all see that other schools, what you found important on one school, you're taking it to your school. Or you're seeing, or, or at least this group to me, you all don't mind sharing. We've had some that really didn't like to share. And this group is different because you all don't mind to share. I, just like Tanya, I heard you say, Wes helped you. And other, other elementaries, you help each other. And that's the way it should be. This, this thinking that you're the only one in the whole by, you're not by yourself because we have three or four schools that need help. I mean, you know, are just now getting back on their feet. And if you can go from there and say, I do need help, then that's, that's to me, that's two thirds of the battle is to get the help. And because we're only helping the kids. You know, I don't care, I, I care about you all, don't get me wrong. But the kids is what counts here. It's not us, it's, it's you all and the kids. And those kids deserve it. We deserve to give Nelson County students the best education we can give them. And being funds are going to be restricted. I know that. You know that from just listening to our governor. Mm. And, um, I, you know, I, we just have to pull it. We have to make it work. We have to pull it together and make it work. And I do appreciate all you all help. Believe me, I appreciate it. We and we're I going to see you. some positive changes. Go visit New Haven to see what they're doing. Oh, There's so much love in that building. Go visit uh, Foster Heights, Oak Tucky Home, every one of you. There's so much love, and they love their students. They don't feel nothing yep. pure love. I know it. When I walk it's in great to buildings. see those buildings now thriving yes. and positive energy and kids learning. I, I love to see that. Uh, people are respectful and yes. love that. So thank you all. Just keep up the good work. And we also need to thank Ms. Williams and Ms. Brown for their yes. leadership in this process also. So thank we've kind of all you. been together. There's a little quiet force behind the scenes. Yes. <laughs> sometimes. Well, sometimes quiet. <laughs> <laughs> if you pay ball game day, it's not a quiet. That's right. <laughs>